Investigating the changes to trace metals in neurodegenerative diseases will hopefully lead to a better understanding of the process and pathology of these diseases. In my PhD, I'm looking specifically at iron changes in Alzheimer's disease and how, they, how the iron changes vary across the brain um, as a potential biomarker of the disease. Using diamond is essential to our research because the intensity of the x-rays that diamond produces means that we can examine the trace metals in the brain. The metals are at a level of maybe one in a million atoms, so without these intense x-rays we wouldn't be able to see them. My area of research is involved in looking at the inflammatory response to titanium. Titanium is a metal which is either used in its pure form or as an alloy in many medical devices such as dental implants to replace teeth, cranial anchorage devices to hold artificial hearing aids, or inside the body in the form of artificial joints. I suppose the ultimate goal of our research is really to get a, a proper mechanistic understanding of how titanium debris and ions um, appear in the tissues and also how they influence the inflammatory response around these titanium devices. And ultimately, by working with material scientists, physicists and corrosion scientists, we hope to bring improved materials and improved devices into the market. Diamond helps me with my experiments by providing a unique facility to allow uh, some very novel experiments to look for really trace um, concentrations of titanium in human tissues um, at a resolution that has yet been reported in, in the um, literature. The processes that we go through to conduct experiments at Diamonds really involve um, taking tissue from around a failing titanium device in consented patients. We then freeze the tissue and carefully prepare it into very thin slices, thin enough that we're looking at single cells, and then we bring them to um, the Diamond facility and um, we perform experiments looking um, using a technique called X-ray fluorescence looking for specifically to the titanium and when we find it within the tissue we can then characterize what chemical state it's in. We can then compare that with the underlying histology to work out which cell types are associated with the titanium in its various forms. My area of research involves hip replacements and how we can make them last longer. Hip replacements are an extremely good operation very commonly performed one million per year in the world, but we still need ways in which they can last longer, they can be used for more active patients. My interest is what makes hip replacements last longer and which patients develop problems with hip replacements so that we can try and solve those problems. Metal implants release debris, release uh, metal from all of their surfaces, either as wear or simply as gradual uh, corrosion whilst inside the body. And these bits of metal debris cause reactions in the tissues that surround the implants. In some patients, those reactions are very severe and they have to have the implant changed. So, Diamond helps us figure out exactly the chemical form of the implant material that is in the cells that cause this adverse response. It would be very difficult to do this research without a synchrotron, without somewhere like Diamond. The reason is we need the resolution of the high intensity of photons to give us the best spectra from very thin sections because the sections contain a relatively small amount of metal. Secondly, we need to choose uh, an instrument that harms the tissues as little as possible. I spend half my time treating patients with arthritis and uh, doing hip replacements to help them walk and half my time researching how to make hip replacements last longer. The future for us 
holds solutions to make them last longer and those include both the ways in which we orientate the hip in 3D to minimise the amount of wear that comes off the hip and they also include new material solutions, so better types of cobalt chrome. Before we can commit to the better materials, we need to understand what is the culprit in the currently used materials. What is it about the currently used materials that makes some patients react very severely to the bits of metal? So, uh, like all clinical research projects are multidisciplinary and the people that I work with in this building for example include a clinical chemist who's on the ground floor who measures the uh, amounts of metal in various body fluids of my patients, the uh, radiologists who work in the radiological sciences unit that are able to scan the patients to see if they have any of these uh, soft tissue reactions the engineers within the university that help me measure how much is actually worn from the components that have been removed. And of course, being a, a centre that collects hip implants, we need to work with all the people that might send us implants from all around the country rather than just myself. So 93 consultant surgeons from the UK working 56 hospitals have been sending myself and my key collaborator John Skinner failed metal and metal hip replacements for the last three years. That's why we've managed to collect over a thousand components and why we're now in a very good position to be able to make some good conclusions.